Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, she's going to be running this video. We're going to talk about women running Star Wars. So I figured Theater I'd let her, let her run this video too. I would let her as a man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you looked in my eyes and, and you knew it was the right thing to do with, with your self-reflection. <laughs> We're going to talk about the director of the upcoming Ray movie. And you, you want to talk about failure, right? Let, Disney is doubling down on failure. Not only are they producing a new movie based on one of the least popular characters uh, who can't sell toys. And a lot of people are blaming uh, Ray Skywalker for the demise of the Star Wars franchise. Not only are they doing that. But they've got a director out there who will not stop talking about how she is very, uh, very glad to put men in their place. Right. Uh, I mean, Thank God she's the first female Star Wars movie director. Yeah. Because there yeah. haven't been any women in control of Star Wars for a long time, except Kathleen Kennedy and, you know, a bunch of other people. God, we'll, we'll talk about this. I'm going to let Geeky lead this video. I know I've done most of the talking so far, but I'm not, I'm not feeling very well. Today, I know, I so. feel bad making him do this, but he my, wanted to. I gave him a choice. My toxic masculinity is, is he, catching up to me. He, you chose this. I did. Um, before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Yeah, woohoo if you do. Woohoo. Uh, also. Go out to, yeah, go out to, <laughs> got a shill, got a shill. Go out to shopclownfish.com. Uh, secure a copy of Crimson Wren Volume 1. And previously on Clownfish TV, these books are in hand, ready to ship. Uh, they've been shipping for the last couple months now. And yes, lots I just had a bunch out today. Oh, so. so, okay, so we're going to talk about this. Now, I'm going to take over since you're not feeling too good, but he has, okay. he'll be adding as we go, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so I saw, okay, everybody's talking about this. There's that, the new, the new director, it was, how, how do you say her name? It's Charmaine Ob Obey de Chinoy. I yeah, don't know. I, I think, yeah. Don't squeeze her. She sounds like Charmin. Anyway. So Charmaine out here is out here talking about how she's the first female director of a Star Wars film, which is kind of funny because we're going to talk about that in a minute. But screen rant immediately. Another, a dude, by the way. Oh, they are right, the next Ray Star Wars film has already become controversial for the most absurd reason. Now, these are the people who get their panties in a twist. Every time, you know, you bring up the original trilogy or anything like that, or Luke Skywalker, they get, they, well, we were all mad because you're mad because it's directed by a woman. Yeah, they're like, look, I, I'm beginning to think that how they're playing the game since they're all desperate for clicks is that they are deliberately going out of their way to attack fans because they know they'll get clicks. They know people like us will make videos about it. And a click is a click. It doesn't matter if it's a hate click or they're clicking because they like you. These sites are living on hate clicks now, but uh, let's, yeah, pretty much. But they're yeah. like, they're like, what? What's the controversy? People are mad because she said that you know her new mo movie um, ha has said that she's disregarding female work, female Star Wars workers in the past, which sounds like that's really oddly worded, um, and that she's referred first one of color, and they're mad about that, and they're being taken out of context. Actually, no, we're gonna look at that here. Uh, what's this guy's name again? Lewis. Lewis. We're going to look at this Lewis in a few minutes. And I love this. Her qualifications and past experience, which I will look at that too, aren't not what they're making it out to be. I don't even know who she is. Include direct, <laughs> wait, include directing the best, most emotional episode of Ms. Marvel that nobody fucking watched. You know, it's like Disney has a Star Wars problem, like a big time Star Wars problem. Their audience is so fractured. It's ridiculous. Their shows on Disney Plus, like The Mandalorian started out strong, kept making changes to it, and they keep going, you know, further and further, and they're dropping in ratings, and, right. and they're dropping in the viewership. People aren't watching these shows because they're tired of it. They don't like it. Don't even get me started on Willow. That's Lucasfilm also. They have a definite trajectory, and it's not going upward. OK, it's like most people, when they watch these movies anymore, the trajectory of certain things are going downward. And yeah, yeah, exactly Wars, what I meant. Disney Star Wars makes me flaccid. It's soft. Disney Star Wars is soft. soft. It's no longer hard. Anyway, it's going downward and people are, are not supporting it. Toys aren't selling. Shows aren't doing well. Disney has, you know, all these different groups trying to get seats on their board because the company is in trouble. And part of it's their mismanagement of classic and, you know, 
high end IP that they used to have was like Star Wars. You used to you put a good movie out and people would be there, you know, in droves. If you good put, being the caveat. Even if you put bad ones out, they would still be there until they, you know, they, they realized it was bad. Yeah. And a week later, it fought yeah. a cliff, uh, like Last Jedi. But, um, you know, they've got a problem with Star Wars. And so their answer is to put this person in charge. And the first thing she does is go out there and stir up shit. Have, have we not seen the South Park episode, uh, yes. Disney? Uh, put a chicken in it, make her lame, make her gay. This is literally, this is like a par- Like, this is a parody. Like, if you were going to say, hey, oh my God, guys, uh, this is like a freaking Babylon Bee or Onion or a hard drive article or whatever. Like, Disney decides to put a, uh, uh, a literal, she's a literal activist, right? She's like yes. a director, activist, we're talk about that in a minute. journalist, in charge of a Ray Skywalker movie. After the disaster that was the sequel trilogy, after five to eight years of unsold Ray action figures, we're going to put this woman in charge and she's going to spout out or spout off about how much men need to get out of the way. Yes, and like, she does. She's, we're going to have clips of her talking about how much she just, you know, she needs to learn men. I'm like, because that's going to go over so well. Because there's a stupid, shallow, sexist narrative. This sexist narrative that only men ever liked Star Wars, that women were never included in Star Wars until recent years, which is not true on so many levels. They keep spinning and doubling down on this. Then they have to trip over themselves with their double standards and double talk, which we're going to talk about in a minute here, too. Um, but before we get into this other part, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna look at what she said. They're yeah. like, oh, no, it's, it's, not, it's just in genuine because that's not what she said. <sighs> so they're here talking about her movie. Yeah. And they said that people are mad because uh, she talked about the, the the announcement of her Ray Skywalker film, and no one wants another Ray Skywalker film. And they said people are mad because it, it, they are saying that disregards the women who previously worked in the Star Wars franchise, and they're saying they're taking it wildly out of context what she said. But they aren't, because I'm going to show you. It came from a comment she had on CNN, and actually it was the reporter on CNN who made the comment about person of color to direct the Star Wars film. The, the argument in this thing is saying that she's not saying she's the first woman. She's just the first woman of color. That's yeah. what they're, they're trying to argue. So it's just ingenuine. She never says that. This person says that. So we're going to listen to this clip and uh, take a look at it here. She's also the first woman and the first person of color to direct a Star Wars film. It's set to be released in 2026. You can. So she says it. Okay. Okay. But then she gets to the, um, when you get actually to the, to, to the person in question, and they start talking the to her. person in question. Charmino Bechinoy. Charmino Bechinoy. So here's what she says. You know, I'm very thrilled about the project because I think um, what we are about to create is something very special. I want to point out there's Headland. Uh-huh. And there she is. And there's Kathleen Kennedy. There's three women right there. And who's at the right and hand? We- who's at the right hand of Kathleen Kennedy? Dave Filoni. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shocker. I said that for a while now. Yeah. We're in 2024 now, and I think uh, it's about time that we had a woman uh, come forward uh, to shape the story in a galaxy far, far away. <sighs> so she said woman. She never said woman of color. She no. said woman. It was the, the CNN anchor who said woman of color. The director herself did say it's about time we had a woman shape the Star Wars story. Except we've Except. had women shaping the Star Wars story for years. Currently, Kathleen Kennedy is in charge at Lucasfilm. Love her or hate her. Mostly people hate her. Can't understand what the hell she's got on the you know, Bob Iger and the board that they won't fire her ass. But the, it's completely run by a woman. Yeah, and it's, it's very obvious <laughs> that it is because... Uh, you know, people were like, okay, we get it with Ray in the, and look, wh- whatever, right? But we get it with Ray in the uh, the Force Awakens, but then right after that, we had Rogue One. We're like, and it's another woman. And we've got Disney Plus shows, and even the Disney Plus shows that are supposed to be about the men are actually about the women. Well, I was going to bring going this up. Because here? right now, Variety's like, Daisy Ridley is a new Star Wars director. It's about time we had a female filmmaker come forward and shape a galaxy far, far away. Yay. And they talk about this woman, how she's going to, she's going to, it's all been men. How dare he? And, and, but we had, we had Deborah Chow in the shows, but not for films, right? This is Variety. Okay. Right. That was, that was, uh, Yesterday. Yesterday. This is Variety from 2019. Meet Victoria Mahoney, the first woman to direct a Star Wars film. 
she was a woman of color. She's the first black woman to direct what, a Star Wars film. And how come they're not talking about her? What'd she She's do? She's a second she did unit something director. To piss them she off. wasn't the first. She was a second unit director. So she but was still, a director. So still. we have already had a director that is a woman of color on Star Wars films. We've had several directors on Star Wars films that were women of color, or that were just women in general. So we had first woman, a black woman to do so. We have had other women behind the camera that were directors of Star Wars. We have um, female directors in the galaxy far, far away. And they're talking about different people. And it's talking about Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, now, Grant, yeah. this is a TV show. It's, it was on The Mandalorian. Um, and then oh we talked God, about her. They talked about Gina Carano. I know, right? Oh, my God. And then they had, you know, Deborah Chow. Deborah who, Chow, yeah. Who worked on yeah. Mandalorian and also did, I think, Obi-Wan yeah. and stuff like that. So they were both working on the shows, which I would argue are longer, way longer than a movie. There's several episodes and they end up being longer than a film, but they've had these women on before. But the whole idea that we've never had a woman working on as a director and Variety's like, oh my God, guys, it's amazing. It's all been men. Variety also said, hey, hot damn, we had the first female black woman to direct Star Wars film in 2019. Well, they memory hold her. Yeah, well, how quickly you forget. They don't mention her in this new yeah, article. Yeah, they don't. They just mention all the men. But then you guys were touting the win in 2019 about how you had the first female black director on a Star Wars film. Oh, those white, those chuds, they're going to be so angry that there is a black woman touching their Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> I know. And, and, and then they completely overstepped. Now, granted, she was an editor. She wasn't. But she shaped Star Wars was Marsha Lucas. Who everybody tend, tends to forget. Yeah, everybody forgets Marsha Lucas. Marsha Lucas was uh, George's first wife, and uh, she was responsible, as I understand it, many others understand it, for salvaging Star Wars because the first cut of Star Wars was a slog. It was not good. Um, it would have probably been a, a box office bomb, but she came in and she tightened it up, and she was kind of uncredited. Uh, and then I don't know when they split up or whatever, but she kind of disappeared out of the public eye. 83, it said. Yeah. Well, here, yeah. even said in here, this article from Collider, okay, that she won an Oscar. But they said, however, to reduce Marsha Lucas's role in Star Wars universe like this feels wrong. Because I guess they said she was part of a trio and all this other stuff. They said, in reality, she is the one of the, she's one of the main people all fans should thank for the sheer yeah. existence of Star Wars as we know and, and love. But yeah. women, yeah. women had nothing to do with Star Wars until current year. Till current year. And thank God, this other chick showing up to finally to be be a director or be to shape to shape Star Wars because no other women have ever. None of the women who wrote all the books, worked on the games, you know, worked on the Lucasfilm Story Group. None of those other women ever have had you know have shaped Star Wars like she's going to shape Star Wars. And then you're like, well, who is this this woman? Yeah, I was like, who is she? I, I don't know She's who she a is. Pakistani Canadian journalist, filmmaker, and activist. And uh, highlight that activist part because that's what's going to get. What them. you want to know she's an activist for, known for? Gender sure. inequality against women. Oh, my God. Oh, God. This Okay, so this literally is the worst case scenario for. Disney says they're going to walk back these bad choices and they're trying to go pivot back to profit. They're trying to save the company. But you put this person. In charge of a movie. And it would be okay. I wouldn't think anybody would care if there was, you know, so much. If it wasn't the fact she's out there actively. Actively. Trying to stir up shit. Like this little clip. Are you ready for this one? Yep. Do we got the audio on? I believe so. Here we go. Okay. Of activating a force for change. But also trying to permeate that patriarchy that power patriarchy? permeate the patriarchy come on john stewart i know you're smarter than he's he john stewart says stuff to make sure he doesn't get canceled because he's an older white dude That's he talks or <laughs> structure and is that a part of the calculation of your art as well and blah 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 hold on so here we're gonna see to that oh absolutely um i like to make men uncomfortable right so let's put let's put this person in charge of the next star wars movie with oh, ray who people don't like no. anyway they don't like ray they don't like the direction of disney star wars but i mean this is this isn't even doubling down this is just suicide this is stupid this you is know? and they just got dragged by south park they've become a laughing stock for put a chicken in it make her lame make her gay ray skywalker Whatever the hell, Ray Palpatine, whatever she's the hell. She's Ray her, Palpatine. She's not Ray Skywalker. Ray, I'm sorry. Ray, Ray, whatever the hell her name is. She, she's unpopular. Her toys don't sell. Maybe they're only doing this so they can sell all those, those piles and piles of Ray action figures they've been sitting on. 
They're probably a landfill and shredded by now. <laughs> but the ones that aren't Ollie's. Okay, but yeah, I love to make men uncomfortable because men suck. You know, I'm tired of this whole narrative. Are there douchey ass men out there um, that are dicks to women and they treat women like shit? Yes. Are there the majority of men? <laughs> no. The douchey ass, yeah, douchey ass women. Men. They should douche your asses. Some Maybe they get more women if they would douche but your asses. But I'm just saying, are there a lot of men? Are there a lot of men? Are the majority of men that this this film would be like, and you know, would be Star Wars fans that have been around Star Wars first? Are the majority of them total sexist tool bags who hate women? No. Are there some in there? Yes. But is that the majority of men? No. Men have always liked Star Wars. You women have always liked Star Wars, and there have been female characters since the beginning, and female and women involved in Star Wars since the beginning. The expanded universe. Some of the biggest characters like Mara Jade. Everybody loves Mara Jade, male and female love Mara Jade and other kins. And the thing is, you know, it's a woman, and people love her. Yeah. Men love her too. Men hate. They like good, well written female characters. What they don't like is the shit you keep shoveling where it's just a uh, Mary Sue agenda driven, shallow, one dimensional character that's there just to learn the men. Hold it. Rose Tico is a little more dimensional, but you know, she is like puts her ship in front of Finn and, and, and takes the sacrifice away from him so she can make out with him because they're going to learn you because you're bad. You're bad people now because you have a penis. She goes on. I'm used to it. I'm used to people saying I'm a bad person because I have a penis. Well, you're just a bad person because you're a bad person. Okay. I, that, that's true. I am. You Seriously. know, sometimes I, sometimes you're Fred a dick. Cross. A dick. <laughs> oh my god, I am. I am turning in the Frank Cross. But then I'm too much like Claire, so it's a yeah. whole thing. Okay, here we go. Yeah. I'm just picking on him. I actually love him a lot. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's put her in charge of a, of a franchise that you keep saying was male dominated. Predominantly male dominated. Because what could oh go wrong? God. Oh my what God. What could ever go what wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Not you. Just, just not, you. Not, not, you. Not, not, not you. Point taken. Point taken. <laughs> I'm but, sure he um, hasn't tucked up his you know, ass. It's all good. It is important to be able to look into the eyes of a man and say, I am here. Look in the eyes of a man and say, you know, I'm in charge now, bitch. Is basically what she's saying. And recognize that. And recognize that I'm in charge, bitch. Recognize that I am working to bring something that makes you uncomfortable. And it Not all men are going to be uncomfortable, lady. That's, you're still going by the idea that all men hate women, which isn't true. It should make you uncomfortable because you need to change your attitude. And it's only when you're uncomfortable, when you're shifty, when you have to have difficult conversations that you will perhaps look at yourself in the mirror and not like the reflection. I'm not thinking it's the dudes who need to change their attitude. So I'm thinking this is a, this is a while ago because they, they had a, on her Wikipedia page, one, she has gray hair now, but they had on the Wikipedia page that this is the, the World Economic Forum and John Stewart's looking not as haggard as he is now, but like, yeah, this is gonna this is gonna bite Disney in the ass so hard because people are gonna look at this and, and what she's saying, and this is anti marketing. You are telling dudes to stay away from this movie, just like Terminator. That was another dude franchise, and they told dudes stay away from the movie. And look what happened. I mean, what you happened? could argue since this is a while ago, you could argue that oh well, she's changed her opinion. She's looked into herself and changed her opinion, but she hasn't. No. If you look at the stuff that she says, she has not. She's not. I mean. But I will give her this. She did not say that she's the first, you know, non-white person to be directing Star Wars. She didn't say that. It was the CNN anchor who said that. She said that she's the first woman to be shaping a Star Wars film, which is not true at all. Well, CNN never gets their facts right anyway. So yeah. they're, they're actually getting they're actually getting gutted. I guess that's a whole nother. They're, they're gutting CNN again. <laughs> no, I re so. recommend that, that one chick be one of the ones that are gone. But when you look at her... Um, IMDB. You're like, yeah. okay, well, she must have a whole bunch of, of credits. Not really. Uh, producer, 24 credits on a bunch of things nobody's ever heard of. Well, maybe in Pakistan. Yeah, but not. Uh, uh, director, previously. Ms. Marvel. Everything else. Activist most of this crap, stuff. activist stuff, or things that no one's ever heard of. Uh, upcoming. It's just the Star Wars stuff. And it's reggae girls. And there's like nothing here previously as a writer on uh, nothing anybody's ever heard of. I, 
I, I, I don't know what to say. I think that um, if Nelson Peltz and Jay Rizzullo and Ike Perlmutter are going to step in and try to save Star Wars, <laughs> I think they need to hurry up because they're going to start filming this thing in a couple of months. And if it were me, I'd be like, yeah, you know how much money we lost on the Marvels? Yeah, we're going to lose as much money on this movie as we lost on the Marvels, if not more. I mean, that's what I'm going to look at. I'm going to be like, are we going to spend 200, 300 million dollars on another Star Wars movie with like the least popular character and a director that's out there uh, effectively telling men not to come see the movie? You're you're telling people years ahead of time to not come see the movie. You know what? Else? You know, that 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 happened with uh, the Marvels, too. It was the same thing. You know, that's yeah, like, pretty much. And and look what happened. People didn't come to the movie. Well, so, back, back to Lewis here. He's like, the argument raised that it should not matter which gender a filmmaker identifies or ethnicity as long as the mo a good movie is crafted. Yes, I agree. However, the argument has been lacking considering Star Wars movies in the past. Well, no, it's not. If you said it doesn't matter what gender or that they are, if they have a good movie, then that is not lacking. It's because yeah. you're mad because you, want, you think women should be in charge, but women have been in charge. You know, and they're saying they're talking about her, her that, th that video stuff. Yeah, her credits, and then she's oh, she's best never directing two episodes of Ms. Marvel, which no one watched. Was one of the least performing shows on Disney Plus. No one cares about Ms. Marvel. I'm sorry, they've tried to make it stick repeatedly. It is not working. You could be the best director ever, but the show still sucks, and no one watched it. It's so, in solid hands because I say so. Oh, my God. So now I, I've noticed because of this, uh, some comments that George Lucas made mm -hmm. during uh, Empire and Jedi are making the rounds again. I guess this this came out of uh, uh, J.W. Rensler's book. Yes. And apparently what you said, they're, they're like, well, they were, he was going to replace uh, Luke with Leia back in the 80s. Yeah. So this is interesting. This is a uh, supposedly this is a conversation that was had is on the Star Wars rat George Lucas and Lawrence Kasdan's discussion about Return of the Jedi and the nature of Star Wars. And um, yeah, Lawrence Kasdan's like, I think you should kill Luke and have Leia take over. And Lucas is like, you don't want to kill Luke. And Lawrence Kasdan's like, OK, then kill Yoda. And Lucas is like, I don't want to kill Yoda. You don't have to kill people. You're a product of the 80s. You don't go around killing people. It's not nice. <laughs> Apparently this conversation was in 1981 yeah, and it was mentioned once about killing Luke for Leia. Um, and then they go through it, basically he doesn't want to kill anybody. And, and then they're like, you know, no one's ever been hurt in the show. And he's like, Ben and Han, they've both you know, been hurt. And Luke got his hand cut off. And he's like, Ben and Han are fine. Yeah. Ben's doing great. He's yeah, you know, Ben's fantastic. I don't know. It goes on and on. Luke it's got like, a new hand, two cuts later. Uh, I said, they're talking about how you don't like it when characters get killed. And basically what George Lucas said at the end was talking about the arcs he wanted in in the, the Jedi film. Yeah, yeah. And because they were talking about um, the transcript from the making of Return of the Jedi book, okay? It was a, it was a yeah. conference transcript uh, that went over the case from 1981, a Revenge of the Jedi story conference transcript. So they were already talking where they were going with it for, you know, Return of the Jedi. And they said, though, here's what he said, Lucas said, the whole point of the film, the whole emotion I'm trying to get at the end of the film is for you to be really uplifted emotionally and spiritually and feel absolutely good about life. That is the greatest thing we could possibly ever do. He wanted people to be uplifted. Now they're just like, you know, destroying Luke for no good reason. Yeah, I'm and, like, you know, I'm like this. This adds more injury to insult because, you know, the Disney sequel trilogy undoes the happy ending. And it makes everybody miserable and they kill off Han and they kill off Luke and they kill off Leia. Spoiler. I want to also point out that you're like, you know, oh, no, that, that Ray's the chosen one. Nah, -uh. here, Lucas. Um, they're talking about different parts of the upcoming movie and they're talking about rolling the fun parts and have an undercurrent of fairly serious study of father and son of good and evil. The whole concept of the original film is that Luke redeems his father. Mm -hmm. Luke redeems his father. Yep. You know, they're not talking about, you know, the, 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 the that patriarchy. Was the point. Yeah. I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired of the, the, the stupid mentality that Disney especially has and other Hollywood places have. You want to repurpose everything. You want to use everything that's been done before. But instead of just building upon what's been done before, you feel like you have to destroy everything so yours can stand because you know damn fucking well that especially if you're shoving in the characters you've been shoving in, if the other characters are there, they're going to outshine your characters. Because yeah. no one wants your characters. They, that, you can work together and have them build each other up, but that's too hard. That's, that's what the point of this was. The point was to destroy 
uh, you know, Luke Skywalker, you're going to reintroduce Star Wars to a new generation. And you cannot tell me when they've got literal activists working on these movies that that wasn't the intention to destroy Luke and tear down what George Lucas built and replace it with a female lead and, a, a you know, um, a, a more uh, political uh, activist message. Well, couldn't you argue that women have been shaping Star Wars then too, since the the the, the well before Disney sequel trilogy? But they, because Ray is the lead character now. Yeah. So I'm like, this whole idea that women didn't shape Star Wars until she showed up is absolutely ridiculous. And she is not the first woman of color to direct a Star Wars film. No. Um, I love Variety how they double talked themselves and didn't realize it. Um, I don't think it's a good look. I mean, she might have walked back what she was saying then. It's, that was fair. That was from a long time ago. So it, I'm just playing it because it's been brought up as a recent thing that they're pointing out. She loves making men uncomfortable. Um, that's not going to work with Star Wars. You're yeah. going to have to find a way to, to, to if you, you're going to have to find a way to appeal to the whole audience, not just the ones with tits. There you go. And a lot of the ones with tits like male characters. Yeah, well, guess what? You're not getting Kylo Ren back because Adam Driver's not coming back. And why would he come back? Because the Raylos chased him off. Well, the only reason Rise of Skywalker <laughs> did anything at all was because the only people that still was there was the Raylos. Yeah, they got much. what they wanted. All the other fans, the Last Jedi fans left. Yep. The original fans left. It was basically the Raylos show. And now that's what you're left with. Yep. There so you, go, you have you have the Ray without the low. There you go. So I, I cannot wait for this thing to do less than the Marvels at the box office if they actually go through with it. Uh, good luck with that. It's Star Wars is, I mean, it's not just dead. It's dead, buried. They're pissing on the I don't grave. understand how it gets this far. Like like you said, it's like you're deliberately trying to, to, to destroy it at this point. Because they're letting Kathleen Kennedy run amok, and there's nobody that has the balls at Disney, male or otherwise, to tell her to knock this shit off. I'll tell her to knock the shit off. Kathleen Kennedy, fucking knock the shit off. I've got the balls and the boobs. Knock the shit off. Grow the fuck up. Step down. Your old ass is old anyway. You should be. <laughs> I was you say, be she making, has definitely grown up. You, is, you need to get your. You need to get your ass. Retirement. Your and your depends out of the seat and let somebody in there who knows what they're doing. But right now, to be completely honest with you, I don't think anybody that's there currently would be a good fit. No. Because you know, Favreau maybe, but Filoni not for no. sure. Favreau maybe. Yeah, Filoni. But I don't think he's, he's allowed to. So, you know, whatever's going on there, this is, this is why Disney is a shakeup. Disney yep. is complete. it's going to keep continuing the shit. This live action, these live action remakes of their animated content, these poor decisions of Lucasfilm, running Marvel into the ground and changing everything that people love about it. And then they're going to be constantly losing money. Um, and they will refuse to change it for whatever reason. So good luck with that. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy, need, you need to get your ass out of the seat. There you go. All I'll right. tell her. I have no problem. I'll tell her to her face. South Park kind of already, you know, told Disney to their face. Is that why they're doubling down on it now? Because, you know, they don't want to be like, well, fine. We'll, we'll show you. We'll show you, chuds. We'll, we'll just go get some activists to do a Ray movie. How you like that? How you like that? Uh, also, you didn't invent, you didn't invent activism. You didn't invent, uh, you know, this, this whole idea that, you know, oh, there's your sexism and racism and all that crap. You know, this stuff was solved a long time ago. You're just digging it back up to cause more division. Say you solved it. Yeah. You, just, you haven't done jack shit. They're just dragging the corpse of Star Wars around to this so point. Self-reflect it's... and think about what you've done. Isn't that what you told men to do? Right back at you, sweet cheeks. All right. We're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.